Hello everyone, because many questions came up on how to use arrows, I wanted to do a second video that shows you uh, some of the tricks and tips uh, with the arrows tool. Arrows tool was built by a colleague of mine, uh, Alistair Jones, and it's really useful for um, quickly developing a graph model or a graph example. So for instance, if you want to do a graph example, we start with uh, the first node, which shows uh, initially we can use a caption as an uh, label, so we use person name uh, Michael, that's me. We saved this and now we have a person with name Michael. Uh, if you want to create relationships, you can drag them out on this, on this halo, this border ring. And so if you drag them out, you can also immediately position them, so that's quite useful. Uh, so um, I want to say that I um, want to lead, or I'm leading Neo4j Labs. So Neo4j Labs is a um, good question set department. Uh, name Neo4j Labs. And uh, then uh, we can pull out, for instance, that Neo4j Labs has project uh, like arrow, uh, epoch, Oops. Uh, like epoch, uh, it has uh, projects like uh, the ETL tool, project name ETL tool, project, and so on, right? So we have the Kafka connector. GraphQL integration in GrandStack and much more. Uh, in GrandStack, for instance. Okay, cool. So we have uh, some names, and then we can also say, okay, these relationships should actually have uh, types. So you see, we can change the um, uh, scale of this really easy by tracking out nodes, but you can also change the scale by using the slider for having longer or shorter relationships, right? So we can choose this internal skill here. Uh, so we can say, okay, Michael uh, leads Neo4j Labs since its inauguration, which was uh, since 2019 or 101, basically. And uh, we can do this. Actually, we can also remove the quotes from the date if you want to. So. And uh, the department uh, launched uh, projects APOC as uh, since 2017 or 301 and so on. Right, so we can also put uh, properties on relationships. You can edit relationships. If you double click a relationship, you can reverse it so it points in the other direction. We can also delete it. If you delete a node with double click, then also all the relationships are removed as well. Okay, uh, so you can export this whole thing to SVG, which is quite useful. Uh, so you see this SVG looks exactly the same as, as the other one. It's not movable anymore, but you can at least select the text and so on. So that's quite useful for, for people. Um, the other thing that you can do is um, you can change the style. So I usually use this style for uh, presentations, but you can have, if you have something like uh, documents, I often use this uh, bootstrap style. Unfortunately, there's a bug and you have to click it twice, but then it changes into this bootstrap style, which is also quite nice, uh, which looks a little bit more professional, I think. So for a document, I often use these, uh, this one. Um, the other thing, uh, of course, you can make screenshots of these. Uh, that's that's sure. So you can export this as a cipher statement. So you can um, just copy and paste this into your near, near your browser. And then you see captions are turned into um, to labels and relationship types, and properties are turned into um, into properties on a node, and it numbers basically the these things as well, and you can open it in the Neo4j console uh, if you want to. Okay, so one uh, important question that often came up is how do I uh, clean this up? Uh, how do I remove the code? So actually, there's this export markup button which is really interesting which has the whole diagram as markup. So you see the nodes with their positions, which is, is really important because you want to uh, layout this. 
and the relationships that point from one node to another node. Um, as you might know in uh, in arrows, there is uh, if you have multiple relationships between two nodes, you can also pull it out. Then they start to curve, uh, which is also quite quite cool. So I can have two, then it curves more, then it curves more, and so on. So you can have also some fun with with curves here. So Alistair did a really good job of that. And you see also some of these results in near future browsers visualization. Okay, back to back to the markup. So this markup is really useful because I can just uh, copy it into an um, editor like uh, uh, Atom here and keep it. And that's my graph, so I can save it also for later, which is uh, quite useful. But I can also remove it, and that's a way of uh, cleaning up the uh, cleaning up the graph. Another way to clean up the graph is, um, so you see I use incognito mode here. Uh, so you can use incognito mode to clean up a new graph because it stores the graph also in local storage. So I can just select the inner, inner uh, parts of this UL statement here. And if I click save now, my graph is gone and I don't have it anymore. But if I open this export markup button again and copy my graph back from um, from Atom, then come on, uh, then I get my graph back. Okay, which is really useful. Uh, so you can save your graphs and remove, clean them out, and then do the next graph and and so on. Um, I just quickly want to show you where it's stored in um, in local storage. So you have basically in graph diagram markup uh, the the storage here, and so if you delete this, delete, yes, delete. Can I just delete this? Clear. Can I only just delete this one value? Okay, if you clear all and reload this, it should be gone as well. So that's the other option: how to delete this. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoy using arrows. I do. And uh, until next time.